Greetings, housemates, and welcome back to Let's Play XCOM Art of War. I'm Flop, the Art of War mods creator, and today we are going to be, I think, tackling this UFO crash site, but you never know if other missions are going to pop up. There are quite a few missions per month. That's how I made the game, because I wanted each mission to count for less of your success, so you could pass on them so they could go a little bit faster. Um, and so we could send more people along in general. I wanted to make um, I wanted to make losing characters. I wanted to make individual fights. I wanted to make it feel more like a war. So it is a longer game. Uh, people have asked, like, is it worth it? But I'm like, you know, that is up to you. Um, I think it is awesome. You can turn off Dynamic War if you feel like it. It might unbalance a couple things, but it should still be playable. If you turn off Dynamic War, it will become a shorter game with fewer missions. Um, in my mod. All right, so uh, we've got coming up in one day. All right, so let's let's think about this. UFO crash site, 31 hours. So we've got one day. The only thing happening in one day is a new interceptor. That's not going to do anything for us. Um, let's check our barracks because sometimes you can wait out a good soldier. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like everyone's going to take multiple days to come back. Uh, we're almost out of. Uh, serious soldier, uh, noob soldiers. You'll note they've all been getting a little bit of XP. That's thanks to the virtual tr virtual reality training mod. Um, it's one of my suggested mods. Uh, it causes low level soldiers to train until uh, a couple XP per day. One base, max 11, until they get their third perk. Um, and I think it is suitable to the game. Okay, so remember we got a team of eight, but we're about to start running out of people. How many go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember you can have eight on a screen. I like to count that way. Shukri is my eighth, which means nine, ten. We've got ten active soldiers. To turn ten into two missions, I would need to take... Well, we might get lucky. The next mission might not be for two days. But someone with six health and seven days of fatigue, we're totally sending this guy out again. Um, so let's take, let's see how many experienced people. I want him, he's really slow, so let's put him in our first person slot, uh-huh. Um, I like to put slow people and or really fast people out in front, um, it depends. Uh, this character, let's see, uh, slow, pretty good aim, tough. Um, we could go either way. Uh, the problem with turning them into a gunner is that the gunner weapons are really heavy and they'll be even slower. Um, but high health is good on a gunner because when you suppress things, uh, you tend to get shot. Um, gunner weapons do tend to have long range. Rockets also tend to have long range. Um, and there is like a long range rocketeer that we could have. So let's see what the next person we're adding is. Is there someone else with seven days of fatigue and a lot of health? Oh, boom. This rookie. Um, however, if this rookie just stays in base for five days, they'll level up. Um, no risk. But they do have six health. We'll think about it. Anyone else with a lot of health who's got a level here? Everyone else has five. Four, seven days, that's bad. Five and five days, that's not so bad. Um, five and two days. Five and five days. Remember, the, the reason I'm looking for more health is because they take two damage when you send them out and they're um, fatigued. Uh, so the more health they have, the less time they spend in the hospital thanks to that two damage. Okay, and what kind, what do we have here? Ah, uh, my two unique classes to my mod. That is the sleeper class that starts with neural damping, making them... Um, very psi resistant um, and mind control resistant. Not something I have to worry about too much in the early game. Or my command smoke grenades. Uh, that's pretty good. We'll talk about both of those. I do like to get some commands out early. Uh, let's go with gunner because I do want to talk about gunners. Note that your mobility increases by one. That's because gunner weapons are so freaking heavy. Um, that some of the stat points that I give to this class I use to give them gunners, but I want to talk about the gunner weapons a bit as well. Um, on this side, with good health, aim, moderate mobility, and low defense, I could go either way. 
Um, high willpower here. Um, I want to go with the command class as they are, well, you know what, let's go with sleeper for now. Because I want to talk about sleeper. So sleeper, you'll note that we got, sleepers get one health every time they get a perk, every time they level up. Um, so you get a lot more health than any other soldier class um, until you get to mechs. Uh, they get a lot of all the stats, they gain a mobility, they gain a little bit of willpower, the least amount of willpower per level, uh, but they don't need it to resist Psy attacks because they get 20 extra will when defending in Psy attacks. They won't panic, which is amazing, early on in the game especially. You don't have to carry a trophy with these guys. Um, and of course they spend six extra hours fatigued. Uh, sleepers, let me just talk about this class for a bit. Um, Sleepers get one active um, on when they become Lance Corporals. Rapid fire, close encounters, running gun. Note the stat bonuses. You get two aim here. It's listed right here. Um, one mobility with close encounters, which is amazing. And running gun comes with three will. Each of these columns, this column you always get two aim with all of these. And they're kind of aggressive action focused bonuses. Here, you mostly get mobility um, uh, in this center row. You get mobility here, none here, one here. But, um, and then in this row, you get three willpower per perk, which is actually a lot of willpower. If you max out their willpower, they'll have a lot. Um, and you can actually remove neural damping from the character later so that you can give them side training if you feel like it. And you'll have this perfectly focused super tank. Uh, this makes them real tanky if you go down this right side. Uh, Mobility is really good though, really good, especially early on. Um, these soldiers are really equipment focused. Um, whatever equipment you give them is gonna make or break their usage um, because they're just um, they're just a bundle of stats. And so the way they really express themselves is with all the sweet equipment. I prefer something like this, something nice and aggressive perhaps. Um, do I really want the cutthroat? Let's go with the pistol for some extra mobility. So we'll have two grenades, a little bit of extra health and armor, and shotgun. Uh, just a little more aggressive since the advanced characters can make more more plays like that without dying. Uh, although they are a really good match if you focus on aim with the heavy rack. Um, they can be really good. Skirmisher rack too against, yeah, just, they can become total beasts. Uh, here we have the gunner. I want to talk about the gunner weapons in particular. So gunners gain access to two weapons that no other class can use. The Predator Cannon and the Reaper LMG. So the Reaper LMG is um, eight aim, three base damage. So three is not much. That's as much as the reflex rack. Um, it's less than the assault rifle and the heavy rifle, of course. Um, and it's got a really high crit chance. Um, it's also got a pretty damn good range and six ammunition, which is by far the highest amount of ammunition available um, for all the weapons. Uh, and it doesn't, it decreases your mobility by minus two, uh, whereas the Predator Cannon is minus three. So the, so why, why so little damage? Because suppression is really powerful. Also note with ammo conservation, it becomes eight ammunition. Um, bonus perk, platform stability. Um, platform stability is a really powerful perk. If you haven't moved, then you get plus 10 aim and plus 10% crit chance. That's why there are asterisks up here. That means you get plus 18 aim, which is good. That's better than an assault rifle if you're standing still. And plus 66 crit, er, and 66 crit chance. Um, of course, against an exposed target, that gives you like a 96% chance to crit. Um, and crits do like five to seven damage, maybe. Um, so what what is this gun good for? Well, uh, oh, it does four to five crit damage to you here. You can spec into this, basically. It's great for suppression. You can suppress three turns in a row um, because every suppression, of course, costs two ammo. Uh, 
and it's got a solid range once you get squad sight somehow um, through either a scope or psi powers. And the crit chance is pretty good. Plus when you're suppressing, you get the opportunist perk, which means if they trigger your suppression, uh, either because they try and move or because you have the laser sight, which gives you quick draw, uh, lets you fire whenever they do anything aggressive, then you'll have a no penalty shot against them uh, that can crit. Or if you are a gunner and you take mayhem as your second perk, you do lose one mobility, but you deal two additional damage. Oh, you deal two damage to enemies when you're suppressing them, and your gunner weapons deal two extra damage. So then it goes from a three damage weapon with a high crit chance to a five damage weapon with a high crit chance, excellent aim, excellent range, um, and it absolutely murders. But if all you need is suppression, you know, just, just take it along. It's really not bad. Um, but if you crave that high damage and you're like, why is my gunner carrying a pea shooter or weapon that can, you know, then the Predator Cannon is for you. Predator Cannon has plus 12 aim, um, six base damage, so twice as much damage, uh, four to eight damage, normally eight to 11 on crit. Critical chance is minus 12. It basically does not crit. Even flanked enemies, you're gonna have a pretty poor chance to crit. Um, note its range is 42. That is as far as the marksman rifle. Um, and it can attack and react at really extended ranges. It does have very little ammo, which makes it pretty poor for suppressing. Um, and mobility minus three. The bonus perk is flush. Um, flush does decrease your damage a lot, but with this super high base damage, uh, that plus 30 chance to hit and the high base damage means you are still gonna do pretty significant damage, especially if you chose Mayhem, or you'll have eight base damage. You'll do like three or four extra damage, uh, three or four total damage, plus you will of course have that plus 30 aim. Um, incredible range, uh, incredibly unwieldy, only gunners. Um, so the heavy cannon is for you if you really wanna nail stuff. Um, works Definitely works incredibly well with squad sight. Um, and of course you cannot move and fire it at all, unlike the Reaper LMG. We're gonna take the Reaper LMG because it's awesome and I want you to see why here. Okay, and then we're gonna take some rookies. Okay, this guy, low health, pretty decent everything else. Let's outfit him with the heavy stuff. He'll be our breacher, so he can have lots of armor. Um, cover his weak little body. This guy, low health, good defense. Um, let's make him our medic. Smoke grenades are really good for units that have to stay in place and close their front line, like gunners. Um, also gonna put a shotgun on this guy and attack vest. This one, low aim, high health. Let's go with a skirmisher rack. Yeah, the attack vest will be fine. And I want a mix of grenades in case we run into some drones. All right, our sleeper is ready. Really poor accuracy, so let's go shotgun. Demolition rigging, yeah, let's make her another a breacher. Okay, moderate aim, slow move. Let's lighten his load with a bunch of little equipments and less armor. This one, good aim. Yeah, we'll give him the same treatment, except I want him to have a cutthroat. The laser sight telemetrics kit, both of these items increase your aim by a little bit. Um, which I, and of course, you know, the telemetrics kit comes with those awesome little scanny orbs. Okay, we've got one med kit, we've got one smoke. 
How do I feel about this? Three sh four shotgunners? That's quite a bit, but shotguns are pretty good until you start running into more armored enemies. Let's give this guy a reflex rack. All right, let us go. Urban block. Urban blocks are great for taking uh, AT hits because blowing up uh, human building walls is really easy. Strike one. Prepare for landing. Well, and of course, a little meta game. There's only one urgent mission urban request. UFO crash site. It looks like the UFO went down in a densely populated area. And I guess area these walls the aren't limits. actually that easy to Let's blow just up because everyone they do on the ground stayed all clear. kind of support stuff. Oh, sorry, I've been crouching. I do tend to like hunker down. All right. So you're gonna see the beauty of the Reaper LMG. So the beauty really is that it's this mobile. Is this guy. We're just north of the crash site. And you really want to maximize the chance for it to crit, but the, we'll the true beauty of it is the ability Strike to suppress. One is authorized to assault the alien craft. Okay. Here's our sleeper. You'll know he's got the little glowy halo that comes from having a brain implant in. That, of course, is his neural damping. He will not flip out um, and has lots of grenade. Any with run and gun, I consider they're great to blue move up to see if you're going to trigger anyone. Oh, I didn't bring a motion scanner. Man, haven't we already done this once? Well, whatevs. Okay. Oh, uh, would you look at that? Okay, a bunch of those guys. Um, if we go into Overwatch, uh, it, chance we could nail those bad boys. Where's our... No, that was the one. Not much good cover. I want this guy to also have some shots, but heading for that location. Overwatch, aye aye. Okay. Now we're gonna need him to be in a good position to use that overwatch. This is the place. Let's go ahead and trigger Welcome. these aliens. Or not. Our sleeper is a, a good target to move up, but I'd like a little more information. Someone's, nope. Those were all our people. Okay, here we've got the reflex rack. If, they, if he can go into Overwatch, that would be good. All right, we trigger these guys. 40% reaction, 40% again. Awesome. Oh, so good. And of course, because they're using the assault rifles, they have Sentinel Overwatch, which means they still have one Overwatch. And what, someone is exposed to us, but we can't shoot them. Okay, there's something something going on up there. This guy, he can target them. The beauty of suppression is you don't even have to be able to hit them to use it. It just works. Now my sleeper. Heading out. Move out to the side. Hopefully we don't trigger any pod. 
go ahead and move up. We're gonna go ahead and suppress this guy. Suppressing fire. Suppression is so good that you don't need tons of damage. Vigilant means, of course, we don't suffer any penalty on attack. I do want to move these characters up. Send one that way. There's, like, no cover we can get to. Run that way to draw fire. Maybe. On it. Move here. I like the steady weapon because we only have two ammo in the skirmisher rack, so you can't rapid fire if it's not fully loaded. Okay, looks like that one won't be a problem. Suppression. See how easy that was? Also note that, of course, suppression removes Overwatch. Suppressing fire. Uh, the symbol doesn't go away, but the Overwatch definitely does. Now, of course, there is something bad out there waiting to jump on us. Affirmative. Move this one up. Let's let us see Eyes what we're open. gonna see. The alien flight computer could prove to be extremely Whoa. useful in our own research. Computer, huh? Please take great care in returning it to the base. Yeah, remember, in one triggering piece. the outsider is bad news bears. The outsider is pretty boss. And um Outsider, when you're fighting the Outsider, it does call down all the other aliens in the map. Let's see. Yeah, you can totally be flanked. Okay. 31% chance to hit. Do I take that shot? Got some shotgunners ready to go. Solid coffee. Move up. Note the lack of Overwatch. And the nice thing about shotguns is while they don't do much damage if they don't crit, they are very accurate. Um, they're very likely to hit. Up, we're definitely triggering. Aye, aye, commander. So we're just gonna move around to the side. Nothing to shoot at. Twenty-six percent chance. There is a lot of ammo in here, and a one in four chance isn't the worst. Let's just tuck this guy away. Uh, the skirmisher rack, too, that's kind of bursty potential, but lack of ammo, I tend to just kind of let it. So we'll just pop shots off at this guy. No rush when you can't advance to the outsider. We might as well take pop shots. That guy wants to do pure evil things to us. But our battle scanner keeps him honest. That one hunkers. Get 
is time to go after this outsider. Um, I can't decide if I want to reload. Yeah, we're going to go after the outsider. Here's what I'm going to do. Heading to that location. Got flashbangs. Got everything a good soldier needs. J'y vais tout de suite. Contact ennemi confirmé. Outsiders only have these physical weapons. So we're going to go ahead and smoke ourselves up. Okay, can't hit that thing. Actuality, we could actually move quite close to it. I this can't. character is quite the tank. <laughs> Even hunkering. Note that shotguns take. Okay, uh... let's Got it. advance this one. Get this one up here. On my way. over a tad bit into the smoke. Overwatch. Aye, aye. Get our Overwatch on. Moving to position. Advance up here. I'm gonna go ahead and. Bang. This guy. Moving out. Gonna move over. City weapon. He's there to ambush any other squad of aliens that shows up. Okay, he uses mine merge on this guy. Our oh, Sentinel quick draw uh, pops off a shot. Inaccurate shot, of course. Uh, this guy's low health means red fog kind of makes him a little less dangerous. 38% chance to hit, still not good. You get two shots. Negative damage. Yeah, I figured the damage he'd taken would keep him from being too effective. Also, they like to mind merge the wounded ones. Like, didn't I tell you these guys would be showing up on our flank? This guy's what? He's gonna pull back. Does he even have a shot? 38% chance, that's bad. We just lost one. Holy crap. 12 damage critical. Yeah, wish I had had suppression on him. Alright. Let's see, we're going to... That one up. Aye, aye. Look, man, sometimes people die. Oh, nothing. Guy. Da, commander. Ah, 
Больше не дернется. That one out. I'm on it, Commander. Suppress that guy Bye, so he won't be much of a problem. This one. Moving to We're going to hold here. We should have a good opportunity to drop our grenades on those guys, which will be perfect. He is going to hunger. Position confirmed. Gonna move up. Oh, yeah. Reload that rifle. It's a little low on ammo. On my way. He's gonna do the same. Ready to engage. Need a good bit of ammo when dealing with guns. Now that guy, yeah, he doesn't have much. I've got a visual. The drones pop in. Now they've got pretty high chances to hit, but their damage leaves a good bit to be desired. And what? This guy moves and goes into Overwatch because you know. Hunkered guys are hard to hit. Okay, it's time for this guy to pop into action. I'd prefer Let's to go over here. We don't want the outsider to have any of that. And the needle grenade, I think I can catch all of them with a good one right So we're going to use the needle grenade because the AT kit gives all of our grenades the anti-material charges effect that is extra damage and this is just going to wipe the whole pod. We could of course collect all of them but we're Eat dealing this. with other stuff right now. Plus if we kill them quickly we get mill. So no, the needle grenade has more base damage which makes it actually more damaging than the AG grenade but the AG grenade of course destroys cover. Now Totally time to bum rush this outsider, but uh, since there's no, let's take a look at what perks it actually has. Um, Slayer, this is what causes the critical damage to be absolutely horrific. And if you see Slayer on an enemy, you need to be as careful as possible to prevent them from getting critical uh, chances to use those critical hits against you. Unity, plus five will and plus five defense. Uh, this is on outsiders and other incredibly, other kind of leader level enemies. Um, and applies to everyone on the map. Um, Lone Wolf, all allies are distant. There is only the mission. Plus six aim and crit chance uh, when there's no allies nearby and it has subdermal plating. So those are the active effects. Over here on the left, we can see it has squad site, danger zone. So it's got proximity, uh, suppression, ready for anything. Whew, if it makes a standard attack or rapid fire attack, it's, as its first action, it automatically enters Overwatch. Slayer, close combat specialist, don't want to get too close. Bioelectric skin, I'm really not sure if this works in the game. Concealment, um, so it can cloak a little bit. Vigilant, uh, reaction fire suffers no aim piddle. That's really important to note, especially since it's in Overwatch right now. The uh, little esprit de corps. Okay, this guy is gonna hunker again because he is kind of trapped. That thing's vigilant overwatch is terrifying to us. Um, it is an enemy to be feared. Aye, aye. Let's try and finish off this drone. Uh, so if you look at the drone, note it's got a single pip up here. That's because it's elevated, it has aggression. The combination of aggression and slayer are what really make enemies deadly, so watch out for that. Note that basically every enemy on a UFO mission will have um, increased. We're going to move. We'll have increased defense and willpower. We're going to run and gun up here. And shoot this thing in the back. Yeah, I think. We didn't kill that drone, but it's fine. Okay, sleeper first. 100% chance to hit, 62% chance to crit. Uh, 
Uh, 24% chance to hit. Not, not good enough, I'd say. Getting it done. But we're staying out of line of sight. Worth taking if I'm not going to do anything else. We move on this thing. 33. Let's just go ahead and suppress it. That's just ammo Suppressing we're spending. Ooh, there goes its cover. It's definitely going to try and move, uh, I believe. 49% chance to hit it. Here's what I'm going to do. We have Guardian. Uh, you can see Guardian here grants half a damage reduction point, and when in Overwatch you gain an additional 15 for, uh, defense. Uh, we're actually trying to avoid getting shot up by this thing and to make ourselves harder targets. Uh, we could try and wound it, or we'll do this. We'll go into Overwatch. This guy's going to move 95% chance to hit, and we crit for 5 damage. See, that's what the My Reaper LMG well. is good for. It ensures that things work. This guy didn't take a turn. Is that correct? I yeah, I don't I don't know what's up. Um, I don't know what he's thinking. Did he have to reload? Something like that. Um, either way, he's in for it now. I don't want him too close because it does have. We're gonna move up here and we're gonna flashbang it. Uh, it does have close combat specialist, uh, which means if we get too close, it'll take a free shot at us until it runs out of ammo. Um, and that's not, we don't wanna make it run out of ammo using our bodies. Didn't someone else have one of those? No? Okay, so we could flank it one of us. Gemini. Good to go. Okay, so if it's flashbang this turn, we'll suppress it next Good turn. Good to go. Who can you see? And you look at that, more little baddies on their way. They can't see us because they've got slightly lower lines of sight than us. What would be great is ambushing them from above or behind. This guy's ambush has been sick. So yeah, I reduced some enemy lines of sight to make them a little less reactive. So you can actually see them before everything goes down and take advantage of that. Um, the getting up on the roof is so good. Where can we get in one turn? Nice, anywhere. Can I actually... See anything? go with that. Getting a better look. If you don't need to reload, um, tossing a battle scanner is a great thing to do. Also, tossing a battle scanner isn't so bad because you have more actions, um, even with one unit down. We're doing fine. On the move. I'm on answer. Okay, I do want to get close to this guy and start dealing damage. No one wants to be the first. 
Affirmative. We're really close, so hunkering's kind of important. Overwatch in case it tries to move. These guys are moving in. Do they encounter us? No. 3% chance to hit. Oh! And of course it goes into Overwatch. God, oh that sucks. Someone has to move. Or we really want to bum rush it. It's Overwatch is too good. This guy. This guy. So if someone's gonna take a hit. Probably someone with four armor should be the one taking the hit. Uh, it's gonna get a lot of Overwatch shots though. All right, we need to clear it's Overwatch. This guy's gonna do the poor man's. He's gonna dash. Okay, you know, it's gonna trigger a pretty decent shot by this guy. 45% chance, Whew, glad it missed. Of course, dashing reduces its chance to hit by 60% of what it normally would be. That's not minus 60, it's 60% less, meaning it only had um, four tenths of the standard chance to hit. Note that since this guy moved, we can now step outside and target this one. Um, suppression should suppress Hi, Overwatch. Ooh, outsider Captain, that explains why it's such a beast and it one-shot nuked us. Flanking, super important. On it. Let's try and finish this guy off quickly. Uh, three damage. We're just gonna have to go in on it. Hopefully there won't be any casualties. No guarantees. Five damage crit. Safely move up here without triggering out of the pod. I see the commander. Maybe he'll step into our. Moving. Alien object in sight. Can we splash them just yet? No. Steady weapon. From there. On the move. Let's step out here if they move any closer. Roger that. Our overwatch might catch up. Here they come. Oh snap. 45% chance. Not bad. We weren't exposed to take it, it, and we're gonna Enemy get another alive. one as well. Come on, two 45% chance shots. 93% chance to hit, opportunity to overwatch. There goes that LMG. See, I'm telling you, it is totally worth it. Maybe the stats seem weird at first, but get used to it. Figure out what it can actually do well, and you will totally reap the awesome rewards. Okay. I really want to use this battle scanner okay. to try and wrap things up. Although, if I have a nice exposed shot, so 59% chance to hit, 50% critical chance. Why is crit chance so low? Is that guy actually exposed to us? Uh, he might be hardened. It happens. Um, but if we just keep him exposed, he'll be all freaked out. Let's think about that. Got it covered. Because this guy might actually have a nice flank shot against him. Yeah, buddy. But if your good shots miss, need more practice. that's what you need the crappy ones for. Okay, we're Solid just going to advance, try and stay a little safe. Hmm, 
That one's got a nasty green glow about him. Moving out. I want to check it out, so we're going to move a little closer. Slayer. Always bad. Slayer. That's bad. This one does not have that, so I'm more worried about these two. Uh, if I want to get some damage on them... I can definitely use a grenade. Or I can even flank that one. 52% chance, hard to pass up. Got no ammo. And it's dead. A little bit of damage is great for reducing their combat capabilities. Keep that in mind that even a Nick can reduce their ability to harm you, which is really good. I don't think there are enough enemies left to need to reload, uh, or that the need to reload is more important than our... We're going to... Suppress this guy, maybe it's going to go and mine merge him, which would Burning be pretty awesome. fast. And lastly, you know this guy's got Slayer up here. Here's what I got for him. Okay. Rapid fire from a rooftop with elevation is incredibly good. 249% chance to hit, 82% chance to crit. Mm, not as good as I'd hope, but we probably will nick him at least. Need a resupply. Right, let's see what he decides to do. He goes into Overwatch. This guy's totally screwed. He takes a real crappy shot. And we're not going to have a hard time putting him in the earth. That guy... He's in some trouble. I think we can flank him and shoot him in the back with our I'm pistol. On it, Let's do it. We might trigger his overwatch here. Nope. Alright, so why do we move up with our pistol? Well, we get rapid fire um, from our skirmisher rack. And it translates right into this jazz. Ugh. I need ammo. Maybe I was a little obsessed. I probably should use the explosives, but whatevs. Okay, we're out of ammo, but we do, since we haven't moved, we've got our plus 10 aim, plus 10 chance to hit. Let's go ahead and take that shot. Look, because it doesn't take a lot of damage to finish an enemy off, um, it takes the right amount of damage. It takes the, you know, it takes however much there is health left, so aim appropriately. Sometimes you just need a hit. It doesn't have to be a killer. Okay, we're going to advance straight through this. Have we taken damage yet? Nah. Remember Overwatch can't crit? Location confirmed. And this guy's kind of tanky. Plus we're running, which reduces its Overwatch chance. This thing did not have Vigilant or kill zone the two really scary Overwatch perks. And since we're close, we can actually potentially score it from here. Negative damage. Can I see it from there? I can. You can tell by the golden ring under it. That's from one of my suggested mods. Okay. Just Overwatch is good. Here. No need to I'm expose yourself move. to enemy fire when reloading. So Locked and loaded. Back that thing up. Um, I'm really not interested in triggering new aliens, so we're going to advance slowly, just in case there are other aliens. And having him over here with his running gun ready to go um, does bolster our flanks. Hitting nicely. for that location. This guy's moving on up. Moving on up. Got it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Guy bolts. 60% chance. 
and the reflex rack with its vigilant nails the last alien. All right, so we took one shot. It was a one-shot kill from the outsider captain. Not a terrible surprise. But uh, sad nonetheless. Why did that happen, of course? It's a combination of crit chance and the Slayer perk. Um, the combination of aggression and crit chance is bad. But um, seven people make it through. Uh, everyone gains a rank. And uh, eight, six, yeah, yeah. And we capture a flight computer and some damaged stuff that we can sell off immediately. All right, so um, that not undamaged one is pretty good. All right, so we're down two people. We've lost two. Um, we've got a couple wounded, but they'll be back fairly soon. Um, and our roster is looking a little weak. We need to start either sending less people. Sending squads of six is totally reasonable. Um, or we'll be real glad when this shiv finishes up. We could afford a shiv right now. Um, I want more soldiers. I think. What am I building here? Access lift, days remaining. We haven't even got to start building stuff yet. Um, could go with a laboratory or a workshop. No workshops are real expensive. Laboratories have a high upkeep. Uh, you'll find that out when you try and build one. I'm gonna try and put that in the descriptions. Um, and a satellite uplink, what else are we building? A satellite motion tracker. Um, let's focus on the immediate needs. Um, let's build another shiv. Facilities, how much power do we have left? 1430. Yeah, let's go ahead and build a laboratory. We'll just use this satellite. Uh, if I build this satellite uplink now, how many days do we have left? 4th of March? Okay, let's build the uplink now. It'll take 18 days. Note I made this short enough that you should be able to build it should be pretty easy to get one up. Especially because you don't need to build a power facility unless you already have other buildings like Canada Start that starts you with a laboratory and a workshop. Then you're really going to have to rush to get the second satellite uplink up. But should not be too hard. Now we're going to want another satellite soon. We might want to rush build it, um, even though that's expensive. Uh, all right. And that leaves us a little short for buying... Let's sell, sell an Illyrium at this point. And hire one soldier. All right, so uh, that mission went fairly smoothly. I'm sure we're working on a good 45 or 50 minutes right now. Interceptor has Access arrived. Lift operational. Access lift complete. Totally can't have no money to buy things, but I should, um, first off, okay, two gin hunters and a hellstorm, that should be fine, hellstorm will be back in seven hours, yeah, that should be fine, and then, no and then, barracks, hangar, Motion tracker. Excavation complete. Oh yeah, that's what I meant to do. We've been good about capturing meld, finishing quickly. We've paid with our soldiers' lives. I constantly sell stuff. Um, I suggest you do too. Yes, thank goodness those things are so good. Oh good, I couldn't equip those. Lieutenant is, oh, aircraft is back, nice. Soldiers are gonna arrive soon, good, we need them. Let's see what the next mission is. Excavation complete. Excavation complete. Okay, we've got a lot of open space, but no money. We need missions to pop up. Um, I excavated this because it came with a free open space. 
I might even dig all the way down next time. Uh, it's now ours to wait till the end of the month or the next mission to give us money. Come on, soldiers in the base. The more rookies you get out in this first month, the better. Yes. What paused us? Commander, we're tracking several reported right, abductions via cash, the holocaust. Nice, I've got the coordinates locked in. Mission here. Um, eight hours to respond. Thankfully, whew, our barracks is looking pretty hot right now. Um, there is a kind of low cap on the number of soldiers you can have. I think it's like... I, I had it set to 40 for a while. I'm pretty sure I upped it. Um, maybe 60. But uh, that's to kind of keep pressure on your barracks. Like uh, You always want to keep people... On their feet. So we've got eight rookies. Remember, whole screen is eight and uh, nine, ten. So ten rookies, all these specialists ready to go. Um, next mission is going to be a total breeze. So we'll probably go half and half with the rookies. Um, maybe four and four for the next two missions. Try and get all these rookies leveled up a little bit. And remember, of course, with the uh, virtual reality training, people who are really close to leveling up, like say uh, Thendeka Nudlovu. It will only take five days for this one to level up. So if they're really close, you can skip sending them out on missions until they've achieved that next rank and get that little, you know, that power boost up in there. Uh, I really like that aspect. It lets you kind of like, oh, I'm not going to send this guy out. It makes you, you can make more interesting choices. And of course, in memoriam, two private first class down. Uh, one died to the plasma reflex rack of the outsider, the other to the plasma pistol. It's just not much you can do, except give them the finger and the shotgun. <laughs> uh, so thanks for watching, my friends. You can see our barracks was a little tight there um, in the first week and a half, but we are now totally on track. Um, a lot more soldiers in. Finally, our soldiers have recovered, and uh, these ships are ready to go. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little something about the Art of War and you enjoyed the, you know, combat scenario and the instant death that we suffered. But hey, man, it's war. Shit happens. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Please like, subscribe. Until then, my friends, remember, it's all downhill from here.